Los Angeles Lakers boast of three NBA titles this decade, as do the Boston Celtics. But it's been 18 years since anyone can claim two in a row. It was Boston then, and it's Boston now shooting for that mark. And once again, the last hurdle is their old friends from L.A. The Lakers danced their way to the finals with a flamboyant attack featuring the best choreography in basketball. But they were healthy, happy, and clearly the team to beat. Meanwhile, the battered Celtics endured a seemingly endless series of wars back east. Drained by fatigue and devastated with injuries, the proud champions rose from the ashes in an inspiring display of courage. Now, they bring those scars to the biggest battle of all, the NBA Finals. It's that time of year, and tonight a new chapter unfolds in one of the sport's classic rivalries. It's the Lakers and the Celtics tangling again. Sports fans in this sprawling metropolis have frequently been portrayed as blasé, even laid back, if you will. But one team has turned this all around. It is the pro basketball team that plays inside the Forum here in Inglewood, California. The Los Angeles Lakers are shooting for their fourth championship in this decade, and they have turned on Southern California like no team in recent memory. CBS Sports welcomes you to the 1987 NBA Finals. We are ready for round one. The defending champion Boston Celtics against the Los Angeles Lakers from the Forum. Good evening, everybody, and welcome I'm Brent Musburger. I guess it's sort of like inviting two very good and familiar friends back to the championship, the Lakers and the Celtics. And I couldn't help but think about Kareem Abdul-Jabbar as he checked into work here earlier this evening. Here's a man at the age of 40, still at the peak of his career, coming for his eighth NBA final. Meanwhile, over in that Celtic locker room, that young man right there, Connor Henry, he was seven years old when Kareem first played at the National Basketball Association with the Milwaukee Bucks. How dominant have these two franchises been in the National Basketball Association? Well, they have played for the title 40 times, and either the Lakers or the Celtics, well, they have won it a total of 25 times. Now let's get out to the two gentlemen who are going to call the action for you in this year's final. Dick Stockton and Tommy Heinsohn. Dick? Thank you very much, Brent. This is really not your typical L.A. Boston matchup because for the first time in that recent rivalry we have a clear-cut favorite and that's the Lakers in fact LA has really been the team to beat this year ever since they beat a healthy Boston Celtic team twice in the regular season that's where we stand going in and now let's meet the starting lineup for the Eastern Conference champions the Boston Celtics at guard in his sixth season from Brigham Young number 44 Danny Ainge Also at guard in his 11th season from Pepperdine, number three, Dennis Johnson. At center in his 11th season from Centenary, double zero, Robert Parrish. At forward in his 7th season from Minnesota, number 32, Kevin McHale. And at forward in his eighth season from Indiana State, number 33, Larry Bird. The head coach for Boston in his fourth season is K.C. Jones. And now let's meet the 1987 Western Conference champion, the Los Angeles Lakers. At four, in his fifth season from North Carolina, number 42, James Worthy. Also at four, in his second season from Oregon State, number 45, A.C. Green. At guard, in his fourth season from Arizona State, number four, Byron Scott. At guard in his eighth season from Michigan State, number 32, Urban Magic Johnson. And at center in his 18th season from UCLA, the captain, number 33, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. 
the head coach for the Lakers in his sixth season, Pat Riley. This has indeed been a storied rivalry, as Brent touched on at the top of the program. Amazingly, 25 of 40 NBA titles won by one of these teams. The officials for tonight's first game are Jake O'Donnell and Hugh Evans and Jess Kersey will wear the Lakers in their gold uniforms and the Celtics in green. Getting set to go in the forum. First time in 10 years the Celtics have not had a home court edge in a playoff series. Four out of seven underway, Boston ball. Boston Dick has to really intelligently cover for their lack of speed. They got to move the ball around in their offense. A lot of passes and good shot selection. Harris has his shot kicked away by Kareem, and here are the Lakers on the run. Scott. And there's going to be offensive interference called against the Lakers. So you saw the fast break, and you saw Robert Parrish, who Casey Jones said is going to figure a lot in the offense inside. He really has to have a good offensive series, and so does Kevin McHale. Larry Bird handling the ball for the first time. And Magic and Kareem very nearly gave the Celtics a 2 to nothing lead. Magic Johnson and Bird the rebound. Bird was the leading rebounder against the Lakers in the regular season. Dennis Johnson. Still no score with nearly a minute gone by. Magic penetrates. And Worthy tries to stuff it in, and it's going to be a Laker foul, the first foul of the ball game. The Lakers are the perfect team with talent and style to zero in on Boston's weaknesses, which is no speed and not a lot of using of the bench. Danny Ainge, who missed three games in the last series with a sprained right knee, he's heavily taped. And Dennis Johnson, who's just been simply exhausted and fatigued with the ball. Magic is on Dennis Johnson. McHale looking for position, and they're going to call the foul on McHale. So the foul on McHale after Green picked up the first foul at the other end for the Lakers. That's going to be a tough matchup for Green if Kevin McHale is 100% healthy, which I don't believe he is. But here they are in the game. Kareem with a short hook over Paris. And it's 2 to nothing. Inside quickly to Kevin McHale. A block by Abdul Jabbar. And here's the fast break. Magic. And Scott saves it nicely for Worthy. They get three men out so fast on the fast break that Larry Bird is really the key guy. He has got to know when to go for the rebound and when to get back. And they've got to block Worthy off the boards. Kevin McHale, short. And here they come again. Scott, three on two, takes it all the way. And the Lakers get back quickly, defensively. Timeout, Boston. And there's Byron Scott slipping through for a layup. You've got to play better defense than that to stop the Lakers. Who already have four fast breaks and four points off of it. Meanwhile, the Celtics looking for their first basket or 0 for 5 from the field. Let's go. Robert Parrish with a wild shot. Kareem really doing a terrific inside defensive job. And Magic Johnson gets the basket in the foul. And the beat goes on early here in the forum. The first thing you've got to do to stop the fast break, Dick, is get over the rebounder. Try and make him delay the ball, the outlet pass. That is very hard if Kareem gets the rebound or the ball is already in Magic's hands. They start the fast break then. Dennis Johnson on the personal foul. And Magic Johnson, who accepted and responded to Pat Riley's call to score more this year, led the Lakers in scoring. And it's now 9 0, an arousing start. For L.A., we have a little more than nine minutes remaining in the first period. McHale against A.C. Green. And finally, the Celtics are on the board with nearly three minutes gone by. What a pass from Magic to Green. He didn't make the layup, 
but a sensational bounce pass inside. Like Green was way in front of McHale on that thrust up the court. Harris finds an opening. And the basket good and a foul. And Robert Paris, who, by the way, is playing on a sprained ankle, hobbling. He had to come out of the game twice against Detroit. Basically, the Celtics are hobbling, and Paris has to go against the 16-year veteran. But the matchup, the two big guys of the Celtics against the two big guys of the Lakers, it's going to make the Celtics feel like they got let out of jail because they were battling for position against a lot of wide bodies. The Lakers don't have wide bodies. Kareem waiting at the other end. Has four points after picking up his first personal foul, and it's 11-5 in favor of L.A. The Lakers scored the first nine in the game. Okay. Worthy nearly picked it off. And they were great in the Seattle series, picking off balls from one side to the other. Parrish goes inside on Kareem. Robert Parrish now has five of the seven Celtic points. Though indeed he's involved more in the offense in this game. Magic Johnson comes back, and he has five. They're backing way into the paint, and they're giving any kind of 18-foot shot to the Lakers. Setting a screen is Parrish, and David Johnson misses. The rebound is by Byron Scott. Celtics quickly turn tail and head up court against the pressure. Scott scores anyway. Nobody is delaying the advance of the ball by the Celtics. Bird scoops it in, and is there any way Larry Bird can't get a shot in after what we've seen in the prior series? Magic quickly back. But this is not to the Celtics' advantage. This is a run-and-shoot game, and the higher the score, the more that's to the Lakers' favor. This is a shooting gallery right now, as far as the Lakers are concerned. No semblance of uh, fast-break defense by the Celtics. Harris gets it inside, good position, and scores his seventh point. But basically, they're going back and forth, and the Celtics will wear out early if this keeps up. Magic hits another, and he's got nine, and he has hit his last four. He's getting anywhere he wants to go, Dick. Nobody's getting to him by half court. 19 to 11. Under seven minutes to go, and Ainge forced the pass in the middle of Green. It's a three-on-two break, and A.C. Green misses. He's the only Laker yet to score. The Celtics coming back three-on-one to McHale, who gets the basket. Uh, Parrish and McHale never got up past half court. Byron Scott missing, and Magic gets the rebound against Bird. And Worthy scoops in. Tommy, if Casey Jones, Celtics don't get the defensive board, they're going to be in a lot of trouble in more ways than one. You know, when they push the ball up so fast at you, the Lakers, you don't get the matchups defensively you like. You don't have a big body blocking out a big body. Larry Bird shot missing, and here's Worthy who can push it up. The green. This is totally amazing to me, Dick, that the Celtics have not stopped the advance of the ball whatsoever. Right now, this is a no contest affair. We will rock you. We Halfway through this opening period. Right now, let's check in with Pat O'Brien. Pat? All right, Dick, thank you. We're back here by the locker rooms. You know, it used to be the players brought a ball and maybe their gym shorts and shoes to a game. The Celtics are traveling with all kinds of muscle stimulators, a galvanic stimulator, a TENS, you know, the Omnium stem, and they're bringing stever trunks of everything, including tape. I was watching Robert Parrish get taped up tonight. He gets 145 feet of this tape on his ankle. That's down the court and halfway back, and then they cover it with this sort of industrial tape. And he gets a lot of, he almost has a soft cast on it. I said to him, Robert, what about the tape? He said, Pat, if I never see tape or be taped again, I'll be the happiest man alive. Let's go back uh, to Dick. The battered warrior, Robert Parrish, but so far the Celtics have been left at the starting gate. And you can say, Tommy, so much for the Laker layoff. Well, they sure have their timing. The passing crisp, the feet right into a uh, fast break on any possession. Bird gets a second opportunity blocked by Kareem. Third block shot for Kareem, another three on two fast break, and Michael Cooper, who has come into the ball game, is guilty of an offensive foul. 
And that man you saw has not been around the forum for a while. And he's come back for the finals. I have seen more three on ones, four on two fast breaks than I'd ever thought I'd see Boston give up in a game, let alone a quarter or a half a quarter. Kareem with three block shots, and he has been the man in the middle for the Lakers so far, and he has stopped anything the Celtics had. McHale gets free inside. So far, just the Celtic front court has accounted for their 15 points, led by Parrish's 11. All five Lakers starters have scored. Now Cooper in the ball game. Kareem with another offensive rebound and loses it. Here's Dennis Johnson. James Worthy went out of the game early for the Lakers. Harris in good position and a good pass by Dennis Johnson. Are you surprised that Worthy came out first? Yes, I am a little bit, but I think what they want to do is put Cooper on Bird for defensive purposes. Bird has scored just two points. Kareem gets inside, and it looks like Pat Riley wants to go for the jugular early here in this one. He counts on pacing the game as fast as he possibly can in the first quarter. There is no walk-up in the Laker offense. Dennis Johnson. A rebound by Green. And here they come, pushing it up hard is Magic Johnson. Parrish with a resistance of sorts. Cooper in three-point territory where he's a big threat. Eight on the shot clock. Kareem takes too many steps. He was getting ready for one of his sky hooks. And off the boards, it's a big Los Angeles advantage. And into the ball game, Tommy, is Kurt Rambis. So it appears that Pat Riley's going to his bench early to really try to tire out the Boston Stars. That's the object of Pat Riley's substitution. Bring fresh people in, hoping that Casey Jones will adhere to his old substitution pattern of playing five guys for a quarter. Pace coaches count on breaking you down, really, at the tail end of quarter. Harris again, and he walked. Three-second violation was the official call. So Kurt Rambis replacing Green is in the ball game, and he's got a world of playoff experience. And he was the starter until A.C. took his place at power forward. I think Casey Jones cannot react in his substitutions. He must anticipate in his substitutions. Kareem on a miss by Magic Johnson. And the Lakers are dominating the Celtics every which way in this opening period. And Bill Walton gets off the bench for the Celtics. Bill Walton is going to come into the ballgame as McHale is fouled. So Walton, who played a minute, in the seventh game against both Milwaukee and Detroit, is going to try again on that very bad foot. I would suspect that he will not be really a big help, but you watch right now, trying to keep on the boards. There's people trying to block out big people, Dennis Johnson, but nobody got to Kareem. Kareem goes out of the game for a rest, and Bird gets the bucket. That last foul was on Rambis. You know, the Lakers aren't playing particularly stellar defense either against Boston's half-court game. Offensive foul. Called against the Lakers. And it's on Kurt Rambis, who quickly picks up two fouls, and James Worthy, who has been the Lakers' leading scorer in the playoffs and is just having a tremendous postseason, has come into the game for Byron Scott. And a big lineup in there for the Lakers. Well, they've got four streakers still left in there. Michael Thompson can run. He's in the game. Haynes. And Danny Ainge misses the shot. It's Laker ball. And the Celtics are going to have to take advantage of that open shot when they're doubled. And particularly Danny Ainge because he's a range shooter. That will help spread out that Laker defense quite a bit if he can hit a few in a row. Under three minutes to go first period. Worthy lost his footing and he traveled. James Worthy, who has maybe the quickest first step of any forward in the NBA, turns it over. When he gets the ball in that low post, James Worthy, and faces at you, call a priest. <laughs> Tommy, you talked about Ainge, but Dennis Johnson and Danny Ainge have missed four shots between them. It's all been the front court for the Celtics, led by Parrish with nine. Five on the shot clock. McHale, double team, and a foul before the shot. It is before the shot, and that is the fourth team foul against the Lakers, so it is not a shooting situation. Magic Johnson picks up number one. 
Celtics to climb back in this game right now have to make the Lakers spend their legs on defense and not running up the court on offense. And that's where the Lakers really made games this year on the defensive end. Walton inside on a good play. Larry Bird. And Cooper comes right back. Uh, Walton was of no help getting back with that soft foot. He's totally hobbling back and forth. But Robert Harris is getting a chance to rest now. And it's an eight-point Laker lead with two minutes remaining in the first period. The biggest lead was ten in this period. There's Parrish, who the Celtics have proven they cannot win without the big chief. Open man was aimed. And the basket counts right at the 24-second buzzer, and the Celtics finally get scoring from their backcourt and cut the Laker lead to six. The Lakers now, with Magic playing all these minutes, aren't really rushing the ball up the court like they were at the very start of this quarter. Worthy in the lane. Surrounded by Celtics, scores anyway. James Worthy averaging 25 a game in the playoffs. And a Laker foul, and that will put them into the penalty. Kurt Rambis has picked up three fouls coming off the bench. So the Celtics will be shooting this one. And the Celtics only have one foul tick, but it's not surprising to me because they never even challenged anybody on that fast break, even when they were going for layups. So that's not anything to be proud of. No. <laughs> Here's Kareem, who is heading back in the ball game. And Michael Thompson moves now to a forward position. Kareem is back at center. And Kurt Rambis goes out with three personal fouls. And keep in mind, even though they're only one team foul against the Celtics, they can only foul one more time before they get in the penalty in the last two minutes of the period. The lead is six for the Lakers. And Dennis Johnson picks Magic Johnson up a little bit further out than he had prior. And inside is James Worthy. Basket good and a foul as well. And for some reason, the Lakers are getting free on the weak side baseline for good passes from the likes of Magic Johnson. Well, they set up a play where they think he's coming to the ball, but nobody knows where the ball is with a green jersey, and Magic just throws it past their ear, and Worthy will catch it and put it through. The foul is on Walton. And Worthy misses a chance for a three-point play. It's 33 to 25, winding down to a minute to go in the first period of game one, the NBA Finals, and so far it's been the Lakers. Cooper is all over Ames. McHale draws the foul. And fouled by Michael Thompson, who, of course, know each other from the University of Minnesota days, when Thompson recruited McHale and kind of helped him through school. I think uh, Michael Thompson perhaps plays Kevin McHale, one of the top two defenders against him in the league. Uh, very few players can defend McHale when he goes into that fallaway jump shot, but Michael Thompson was right there. Casey Jones going to his bench early. Sam Vincent, who emerged quickly as a guard off the bench. Second year first round pick out of Michigan State. You're going to have Dennis Johnson around in the fourth quarter with any kind of legs. You've got to substitute for him early in the first half. Sixteen on the shot clock. Magic from Worthy. It could be Worthy from Magic. Magic from Worthy. It doesn't matter. The Lakers are executing, and they're up by nine. Don't turn your head on any of the Lakers' passes. you got to know where the ball is. Vincent underneath saw Michael Thompson thought better of it. McHale posting up against Kareem. And traveling three-second violation. The second one called on the Celtics, who really didn't get in sync offensively in that sequence. 19 seconds on the shot clock. There is a differential of one second between the clock you see in the shot clock and the crowd begins its ovation for a very high-scoring first period for the Lakers. Worthy. Going for three misses. One second ago, and that'll do it. That's the end of the first period with the score. The Lakers 35, the Celtics 26, and we'll return to game one of the 1987 NBA Finals from the Forum in Inglewood after this word from your local station. This is... <laughs>
America's game. It's fantastic. And it's been the familiar duo of Kareem and Magic in the first period. Well, they are uh, sky high for this series. Boston, I think, uh, did, did not show any kind of preparation for stopping a fast break team. They did nothing to stop the Lakers fast break. Darren Day is into the ball game, and he'll be guarding James Worthy. A tough assignment for him. Day made most of his chance in the series against the Pistons in Milwaukee coming off the bench, and Worthy hits from the corner. So James Worthy now, the second Laker, to move into double figures and the biggest lead of the ball game right now for the Lakers. Larry Bird scored four points in the first period for Boston. Cooper, NBA's best defensive player, is on E. Bird over Matt. Larry Bird, who scored 35, 36, and 37 points in his last three playoff games. Well, Darren Day is in there for the Celtics to really try and catch up with James Worthy. You can't defend James Worthy until you catch him. Day is on him, and now they're going to isolate Worthy. They double team, and Magic gets through and gets the basket. That's how quickly the Lakers can pass if they're double. Boy, they have worked on this double team offense so effectively that they know where the, all the open people are. Cooper is on Ainge. Magic is on Vincent. This is the shot, and Kareem with a rebound. And Sam Vincent commits a foul, his first. So this is the first time in this kind of playoff level for Sam Vincent and Darren Day of the Boston Celtics. Well, Sam went up and challenged Magic, almost stole the ball, but it looks like Dennis Johnson is going back in for him. Kareem, you've seen it before, but he misses, and Michael Thompson grabs the rebound. Thompson and Kareem with Johnson, Worthy, and Cooper. Worthy, blocked by Paris. What a great play Paris made. Worthy normally takes a one-dribble drive and crams it on that play. Two minutes elapsed in the second period. Kevin McHale will come back in. Vincent driving to the hoop, something he did very well in the last series. He's the only penetrator the Celtics have, Sam Vincent. Worthy working against Day. Basket counts and a foul. They had no chance against those long arms. You can't let a good big man with that kind of quickness feel you and who also has a spin move. He feels you, and off he spins. You watch Worthy's quickness. Takes Day to the middle, gets him to commit, and then right back the other way for an easy two. The three gifts he has, the post-up move, the catch, and a quick first step. James Worthy. A new contract, the head coach of the Los Angeles Rams. Al Davis, the managing general partner of the Raiders, the other L.A. football team in town. Diane Cannon. Kirk Douglas. And a former Laker. Norm Nixon, who was traded in the deal that brought Byron Scott to the Celtics. And that guy over there, what's his name? You know, <laughs> what's his name? He's from the witches of Eastwick, isn't he? Larry Bird getting a breather right now, and the Celtics on the floor. Kevin McHale, Darren Day, Dennis Johnson, Robert Parrish, and Sam Vincent. Worthy looking for the three-point play. And it's 42 to 30, and now the Lakers, after a 9-0 start, have their largest lead. It's awfully difficult to catch up on the Lakers. They play pretty good defense against fast-break basketball, and Boston really doesn't have an exceptional fast-break attack. McHale misses, and here comes Cooper. Magic to Worthy. Two more. Worthy has 15 points, and Magic has 13. When you go out and get Worthy, 
Then Magic drives to the basket on those fast break thrusts. Gay throws it away into the hands of Cooper. Two on one, worthy again. If this were a championship fight, they'd stop it. Mikhail oh, going in, misses. Day the rebound. Yes. And the Lakers, Worthy, cradles it, and we're going to have a jump ball. And there's a lot of time, of course, left. 8.52, but the Lakers are playing their style. Absolutely, and when you throw a pass away like that, they'll get that speed in action. It's a three-on-one. Poor Dennis Johnson, where'd they all come from? Jerry Seasting. The pesky guard who can hit the open shot if he gets open is into the ball game right now. So both teams going deep into their bench in the first period. I think it's very important for Boston right now to weather this storm and try and get back in, get it down to around 10 points before the end of the half. Cooper for three. Michael Cooper, one of the top three-point shooters. He was only two for 12 against Seattle from three-point range. But he hits the one here, and it's a 19-point Laker lead. Harris over Kareem. Johnson. Kareem, and it's off his hands, and it'll be Boston's ball, as Larry Bird, who has scored six points, comes back in, and Magic Johnson goes out. Byron Scott replaces Magic who goes out with 13 points and seven assists. They will not stop the pace, the Lakers, with Magic on the bench. Byron Scott and Cooper are very, very adept now at pushing the ball up the court themselves. Bird missing. Green the rebound. Celtics have not had any second shot. Cooper comes back and hits a jumper. And it's a 21-point lead with a lot of time remaining. They're putting to the Celtics to the wall with machine guns right now. Celtics is shooting 43%. Parrish breaks the drought there. He leads with 11, and all but four of the Celtic points have come from their starting front court. But the Lakers have scored 51 points already, and we have more than seven minutes remaining in the second period. Scott. And there's Green with the rebound. Knocked away by McHale. Good defense by the Celtics. Seasting gets open and hits the jumper. They have to climb back two by two and play some good defense right now against the Lakers, the Celtics. Otherwise, the, Cel the Lakers are going to get their dander really up and start high flying. You mean they're not up yet? Oh. <laughs> Kareem is fouled going in. You saw the, the graphic on the fast break baskets. The Lakers did not wait long before they unleashed Showtime here at the Forum tonight. Legends of the NBA. The smooth touch makes it count. Sponsored by Schick. Walt Frazier could always supply a bit of cool whenever a game reached a fevered pitch. He'd often lay low, only to deliver the big play when most desperately needed. From steals to driving layups, Clyde made difficult plays look easy. As the man the Knicks often look to in the clutch, Walt Frazier usually delivered with style. Well, they're a pretty gritty bunch, as we've seen, and they can make adjustments, but these may be too much physical adjustments that they have to, to make. This Laker team, to me, Dick, is the most versatile team that they've ever had. Maybe the team way back with Will Chamberlain and Jerry West could run as well as this ball club could do. Saw the rebounding story in Kareem. Playing like a spry 20, not like the 40-year-old he is. L.A., by the way, hitting 62%. And filling Boston off the board. 6.44 remaining in the first half. 53 to 34. Biggest lead is 21. And the Laker foul will be their first team foul of the second period. And it's Michael Cooper with his second personal foul. So Michael Cooper... Foul. Larry Bird, quiet so far, has just six points in the ball game on three for eight shooting. Comes around a screen from Bird, from Harris, no pick and roll. Kevin McHale in one of the infrequent offensive rebound hoops for Boston. But look, 
the Lakers push it right back at you. They make the quickest baskets after you make a basket yourself. They've got what I call a no cheer offense. <laughs> Illegal defense, the first one being called against the Celtics. That's a warning. The second time will be a technical foul as Irvin Magic Johnson replaces Cooper in the lineup for the Lakers. You know what I mean by a no cheer <laughs> offense? You don't have any time to you cheer. You don't have any cheer, time to cheer for the shot you just made. You better get your tail back. James Worthy with the ball. Wants some room. Seasting is doubling him. Good passing by. Byron Scott, Magic misses, and there's Worthy. Boy, here's a guy who last year did not finish strong against Houston, and he really has emerged, and superstar stardom is heading his way. And he's been much better in the rebounding department this season. Worthy has hit 9 of 11 from the field. Harris with a good move against Kareem. The basket counts and a foul. Parrish holding fourth with 13 points for the Celtics. Here's the Celtic dilemma. Bird blocks A.C. Green off, but nobody managed to get to James Worthy. A guard would have had to pick him up at that particular point, and no guard in sight. Michael Thompson is into the ball game, replacing Kareem, who goes out with two fouls. He has scored 10. A terrific defensive job for the Parrish misses. Magic with a long pass to Michael Thompson. Green filling the lane like an express train. And Worthy didn't force it. Scott. Johnson the rebound with 5.20 to play in the first half. 17-point lead for the Lakers. A runner by Bird, and he's fouled, and he'll shoot. That'll be the third team foul against the Lakers. And it's not a shooting foul. It was right before the shot. Byron Scott is first. You know, sometimes the Lakers, and I think maybe even in this series, will dare the Celtics to shoot a little bit. Bird just, gets free inside. Just to get the rhythm of the game the way they want it. Magic Johnson comes right back and gets two. No cheer offense. There was an example. Wow. I mean, that's a big wow. He goes the length of the court, and nobody even got to him to dissuade him or blink at him. McHale, double. And no basket if it goes. An offensive foul. Called by Jake O'Donnell against Dennis Johnson. Now it's Kevin McHale, and that's his second personal foul. Celtics against the Laker break, offering no resistance. Worthy gets away, and Seasting who's giving up a lot of inches inside, forced to foul Worthy. What a cute play. They just masterminded a switch where a big man had to be defended by the smallest man of the Celtics, but Seasting was alert to that. The Lakers didn't get the, the alley-oop they normally get out of it. McHale goes out with 11, and Fred Roberts, who was acquired from Utah prior to the season and uh, was a major force early in the year and backed up all three positions. What kind of role do you think he can play in this series? I think ultimately he's going to play an expanding role in this series because I believe he's got speed to stay with James Worthy and the size perhaps to stay with him and the mobility. He's not going to score, but he might be able to defend Worthy a little bit better. And even though he can do that, that puts the Celtics really in a quandary because they don't have the score there and they're going to need points from someone other than Larry Bird. Bird has scored eight points. Michael Thompson over Parrish, doubling his magic, and they very nearly forced the turnover. Seven seconds on the shot clock for Boston. It's 57 to 40 in favor of the Lakers. The Celtics have never had the lead. L.A. ran off nine straight to start the game. Ames against Scott running at him. Threw up a wild shot. Magic to Michael Thompson filling the lane. And a Celtic foul. And the Celtics now in the penalty, and Dennis Johnson commits that. How devastating an attack do you have when your center on the court is filling the lane, the third man up on a fast break? That is absolutely pressure offense at its best. 
Michael Thompson, who was acquired from San Antonio two days prior to his debut in a Laker uniform against the Celtics, and he played very well indeed. Ainge replaces Seasting. It was Seasting before who had fired up the shot with Scott running at him, and he's out of the game now. He got caught, Jerry Seasting, in the last series, not getting his shot off fast enough, and it looks like the same thing is going on here in this series. It was different a year ago when he teamed with Walton and got open a lot in the Celtic championship year. Nine on the shot clock, Dennis Johnson hits, and we have under four minutes to go, and the first basket of the ball game for Dennis Johnson. They've got to get it down to 10 points, the Celtics, before halftime. If you're looking to see how the Celtics can come back, yeah. But Magic misses, and Michael Thompson knocks it away, and it'll be Celtics' possession. Lakers are so capable of just exploding for 10 points so fast. Harris missed. Green got the outlet to Worthy, who gets it to Scott, who draws the foul. They don't waste much time, Mr. Heisen. And they don't rely on Magic Johnson anymore to be the lone setter of the pace. They diversify that task. They took that pressure off Magic's shoulders. Scott will push it up. Cooper will push it up, and that time we saw James Worthy become the middleman. The Byron Scott will be on the line now, and we showed you Norm Nixon, who was traded to the Clippers for the rights to Byron Scott, and Byron was not a popular player with the Lakers when he got here. In fact, uh, he had to win his teammates over, and he's done it in a big way, and he's coming off his best year. He's played some decent defense in this series, Byron Scott. I should say the series against Seattle. He did a job on Ellis up in Seattle. Nearly three minutes remaining in this first half. Bird. Larry Bird now with ten points. It's been the front court. Whatever the Celtics have managed in this first half, led by Paris with 13. Magic with a bullseye. Remember a few years ago, and they said the one weakness Magic Johnson had was the outside shot. He hasn't got a weakness in the world now. He's got the total game. And a foul away from the ball, and that's the fourth team foul against the Lakers. And we'll have a timeout. The crowd has seen the Lakers run away from the Celtics early, and they're waiting to see if Boston can challenge. So far, they haven't. In England, Japan, Sweden, Canada. And There's Hubie Brown, both of whom perform admirably as analysts for CBS during the regular and playoff season. And of course, as far as the finals are concerned, the series will continue Thursday night. We'll be on the air 9 o'clock Eastern time here at the Forum before we switch to Boston for games 3, 4, and if necessary, games 5 beginning Sunday. But Thursday night, game 2 between these teams. Thirty four points for the Celtics starting front court of their forty four points and Tommy uh, right now it's been all Los Angeles and the natural thing to ask is what can you do. Well they really have to get better organized in delaying the advance of the ball of the Lakers if they hope to get back in this thing and change the tempo of the game to the half court style that they prefer to play bird hitting again so it looks like he's on the mark. Score was 35 to 26 in favor of the Lakers at the half. At the quarter, that is, and they may end up doubling that if they can get to 70 before the end of the second period. Six on the shot clock. Worthy guarded by Roberts. See you later. Fred Roberts had no chance. And that priest had a ought to bring the rosary beads, too. <laughs> James Worthy. Who scored a career high 39 against Seattle in the playoffs? A runner by Bird who winds up on the deck, and the foul is committed. We'll send him to the line. Roberts trying to stop James Worthy. As soon as he faces up, he's by you. Even though you have distance between yourself and him, you better not have a good guess on which way he's going to turn to the basket. Dick Stockton and Tom Heinsohn here at the forum. They came out strong here tonight. No late arriving crowd to see how the Lakers would respond to an eight day layoff. And they responded in kind, scoring the first nine points. And they have thoroughly dominated the Celtics, leading here 65 47.
Michael Thompson goes to the bench with three fouls, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar comes back. And for Boston, Bill Walton is in for Robert Parrish. Walton, to me, the first two trips up the court was limping while he was in for that short stint at the end of the first quarter. But they need Walton or a great kite, the Celtics, in order to really help out and get back into this series in, in this game, too. But basically, Tommy, it looks like the Celtics are just countering Laker moves with their own moves off the bench, and they didn't really have a bench in the regular season. Byron Scott misses. Green knocked away from his position, and there is James Worthy, who finally gets the point. James Worthy has 23 points, and again, his career high was 39 against Seattle in this past playoff. The lead is 19 again. Highest margin was 21 for the Lakers. Six on the clock, Dennis Johnson with a good move inside. It's Magic racing it right back at the Celtics defense. Dennis Johnson is the first Celtic other than their starting front court to collect more than two points in this game. You know, by pace, you don't mean to go all the time for fast breaks. Just get the ball to the foul line as fast as you can. Make the game a series of wind sprints. Magic Johnson missing, Roberts the rebound. It's a three on two. Worthy gets back in the mix defensively. Bird with a two-point shot. So Larry Bird getting hot here in the second period has scored 12 points, hitting his last four. He's going to have to become a five alarmer to get the Celtics back into this one. Half a minute to go and 13 on the shot clock. First half, Lakers with 67 points. Two former oh. UCLA Bruins. Dueling one-on-one, -on -one and Walton commits the foul on Kareem. Is Worthy one step to the rebound, and look how strong he takes it to the hoop. Little up fake, and he's up near the basket. Now Walton trying to run up and just run out. Just does not have the timing or his legs together after virtually playing no time in the last two months. Both teams in the penalty. Walton against Kareem. It wasn't long ago that they combined for six NCAA championships between them. That man that just took the foul shots to me is the most amazing player I've ever seen. 22nd timeout called by the Celtics. 40 years of age and he's on a fast break team and still able to run. Actually, Walton and Kareem were part of five NCAA championships. And it's been a long time that they've been in the league. And not only is it tough to repeat, as you know, the Celtics are the last team to do it in 69. It's tough to even get back and have that chance to do it. Only five clubs have had that opportunity. And as we said at the outset, not many people thought the Celtics would survive and get to the finals. And they had to play two grueling seven-game series against Milwaukee and Detroit to get here and uh, you always wonder when they're going to run out of gas and coming in they had not yet you know looking at this thing before it started you'd say the Lakers have the natural edge but Bird there's still Larry Bird with that competitive fire and he's going to have to show it here for the Celtics to do some damage final seconds of the first half and a pushing foul called against Byron Scott and that will send Celtics to the free throw line. Lakers won the two regular season games against the Boston Celtics. And coming in, a lot of people were wondering how the Lakers would respond after not playing a winning team in the playoffs. They had won 11 out of 12 in postseason, 7 0 at home, but this was going to be their toughest foe. And a 20 second timeout called by Pat Riley trying to cook something up to get a couple of more points with six seconds left is the top field goal percentage shooter in playoff history. Six seconds to go at 69 to 54. And Scott, over anxious, lost the ball with one second. But that was Worthy that put the ball behind his back. How's that for versatility? And that'll do it. Larry Bird scored 14 in the quarter for the Celtics, but they've got a long way to come. That's the end of the first half. The Lakers lead 69 to 54, and Brent Musburger will be back with the credential at the half after this message. Back to Dick Stockton. All right, try to make it 8 and 0 in the forum in postseason. 
Kareem doubles. Goes up, misses the sky hook, and Bird gets the rebound. Celtics walking it up. They want to slow the pace. Main thing will be how they react if they get a missed shot here. I think they should work a lot of time off the clock, try and destroy the rhythm in the deal by Magic. And a foul against Danny Ainge. Of course, the turnover ruins all of those fine plans. You've got to be very crisp with your passes. Now, I don't see any of the Celtics demoralized right now. I don't see that in their faces. And they've been a gritty bunch, and they'll probably come out and play as hard as they can. They just have to find a way to stop this pace game. Magic Johnson posting up against Dennis Johnson, and that could be a big weapon for the Lakers in the series. They can always go to that, and Magic is playing more and more like a low post player as the season went along. That's almost a guaranteed two. 19 for Urban Johnson. Leading score in regular season, but second to worthy in postseason. Bird with a good move inside, and Larry Bird with 20. 71 to 56 in favor of the Lakers. He scored 35 in the first period and nearly the same amount in the second. Green didn't get the call and missed inside. Now the Lakers look like they take, might have taken a little bit of edge off the pace game. Harris missing the baseline shot. If you're going to play the half-court style, you better hit your shot. Green going all the way in, and the basket good and a foul. So a missed shot, and A.C. Green on the fast break scores. Here's Magic down in the low post. Now, this is a weapon the first time they've really used it, but he's developed into a real great player down there, and one of the things they're counting on is that Boston guards cannot handle him down there, and if they start to double-team him, he's going to find people for layups. Dennis Johnson, who's handling the ball, has picked up his third personal foul. Johnson has three for the Celtics, and Michael Thompson and Rambis three for the Lakers. Three, three. Jockeying for position, Parrish and A.C. Green. Johnson, Dennis puts a good move on Magic. Four on the shot clock. Dennis Johnson hits from the corner. That was good ball movement that time by the Celtics. Loose ball, and it winds up in the hands of Ames. Bird against three Lakers. Three Lakers, and Larry Bird knew when to stop and when to bank, and he got the basket, and Larry Bird on a tear now, and the Celtics have cut the Laker lead to 13. And I see the Lakers, perhaps, with that big lead at halftime, taking their foot off the gas pedal. They have, in the past, lost some concentration when they moved out the big lead. But maybe James Worthy won't let him do it this time. And James has 25 for the Lakers. And look at Dennis Johnson. Hustle it up over half court and slow it down. That's one of the things. Frustration you can develop in the Lakers if you slow it down and destroy the rhythm in their heads. Mikhail off balance. And Worthy the rebound. And they push it up. That's not where he should be shooting the ball from. Magic. 21 for Magic Johnson. You've got to get to Magic by half court to slow him down. He'll kill you from the foul line. Ames runs Scott into a pick. Goes inside. Bird. Had Dennis Johnson open. Finds Bird inside. Loses the ball. And a three-second violation called against the Celtics. That's the third time in this game. Officials timeout here at the Forum. When I played the streaker and Kevin McHale said to himself, what was that? <laughs> James Worthy has been unstoppable and he has hit his last seven shots. And Pat Riley says he's all business on and off the court. Reminds me a lot of Jamal Wilkes, the way he handles himself. 840 remaining in the third period, a 17-point lead. Kareem misses a sky hook. There they walk it up. I think the Celtics would like the 45-second college shot clock, wouldn't they? They sure series? would, just to move it around and let things develop. But the tempo now is turning more to Boston. Bird, good pass into Parrish. But the Celtics, if they're going to come back in this game, need to hit shots like that. Magic. Comes out of nowhere. 
and turns the crowd on again. One of the advantages of fast break basketball is that you don't have an opportunity to block guys out on the offensive glass. You don't get good position on them. No matter how big or small they are. Scott at 6'4 is the smallest Laker on the court right now. A double team and picked off by Worthy. Wow. KC may have seen enough. 20 second timeout. And the Lakers have scored eight in a row after the Celtics cut the lead to 13. We're back at the Forum in Inglewood, California, where the crowd is enjoying a Laker route to this point. Game one of the NBA Finals between the familiar rivals, the Lakers and Celtics. And right now, the Lakers have matched their biggest lead of the game, 21 points. As were they just timing the play stepping out picking off the pass and with that great speed even Dennis Johnson the guard can't catch up makes him take a more difficult shot but it's easy for James Worthy and they didn't block out Byron Scott on this play and come up there's Kevin McHale coming up everybody's looking for the rebound but nobody got close to Byron Scott and he's got great athletic ability to tip in anything bird with a bounce right. pass in the Paris Gets control and score. But I'll tell you, these Lakers are a wondrous team to watch here, and they're leading 81 to 62. Boston has to climb back two by two, and the Lakers have the ability to explode for 10 points before you can even call timeout. The Celtics, who didn't come out strong, have lost four points from their deficit of the first half. This is looking like a very easy series for James Worthy. Nobody's even getting close to him. Ainge. And it's over and back. Danny Ainge got the ball after Worthy challenged him, but it's a backcourt violation, and the Lakers have a chance to party again. And now the Lakers call a timeout. They have scored 81 already. Guys, look at the stat sheet. How does this Laker basketball and Celtic basketball compare for entertainment for you, Johnny? Uh, this is real entertainment. I'll tell you, this is a marvelous game tonight between Worthy and Magic. It's like a steamroller coming down the court. How'd you get the week off for this? That's pretty good. The timing was perfect, wasn't it? <laughs> I figured if Jimmy, Jim and Tammy can take some time off, I can take some time <laughs> off. Are you, a big, are you a big hoops fan? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I really am. Thank you, Johnny. Enjoy the game. Thank you, Johnny. Here's Dick. And, and look at that guy, Dick. Remember him? Here's Johnny. <laughs> Don't let him near your door. And he looks like he's ready to run yeah, into your door. He? he doesn't have to be in a film to scare you with the way he looks. Lakers in a game one party right now. Harris against Kareem. Double team. Magic finds an opening. And Kareem has problems. Plenty of time on the shot clock for the Lakers. Worthy checks it. They've got six. And Magic Johnson with a great reverse scoop move. 23 for Magic, 27 for Worthy. That's 50 between them, and it's, again, a 21-point lead for L.A. Ainge comes back with three. Well, Ainge could be very important on any comeback bid because he can get them back three at a time. Worthy. Celtics double team. Look at that. Wide open, A.C. Green, and a fastball from Magic Johnson. And A.C. Jones sits bewildered. One of the Celtics blew a defensive assignment that time. And Dennis Johnson is fouled, and shaken up is Dennis Johnson. They have too many weapons and too many ways to use the weapons. Magic in the low post. Now, here's Robert Parrish, a center, and he still finds a way to get it by him. Normally, guards can't, will give the ball off. There is a fast pitch right down the gut of the Celtics lane with not a green shirt in sight. Kareem picks up his third. Dennis Johnson sees the first one roll off. And Darren Day will come into the ball game and give Kevin McHale a rest. McHale looks awfully weary out there. Goes out with 11. As DJ kind of slithering through two of the Lakers, and he got caught up, I believe, on A.C. Green's hip. And it was right below the number three. Under six minutes remaining in the third period. The Lakers led by nine after one period, 15 at the half. 
Darren Day is being put into the game now to, to perhaps press defense a little bit more. Bird is on Scott, who goes to the hoop. Nice move by Byron Scott. Lakers are going to get close to 100 before this period is over. The Celtics are totally flat-footed. Bird off the glass, and Larry now with 24 points, and he has hit his last seven shots. Magic misses, Bird the rebound, and here come the Celtics. Ainge hits a three. Danny Ainge with his second three-point shot in the last two and a half minutes has eight points, and it's a 16-point game now. They're the leading scorers. No surprise. Day is unworthy. A.C. Green all alone top of the team. And A.C. Green. Last year, he wouldn't take that shot. And Pat Riley would say, shoot it, shoot it, shoot it. This year, he's shooting it and making it. Green from Parrish and Bird again. Eight in a row for Larry Bird. 4.20 to go in the third. And Darren Day may have pushed A.C. Green. It would be the third team foul. Pat Riley, Casey Jones. Riley said that his style has changed the last couple of years. He says he's more factual now and talking to his players than the fire and brimstone he used to deliver. I think he came into this series a lot more relaxed than he ever came into a prior series. Can you, can you blame him with talent like that out there? Magic now with 25. This is a devastating machine that the Lakers have when they get it unleashed, that fast break and pace game. Bird goes around worthy with another move, nine in a row. By Larry Bird, he has 28 points. Three forty-five remaining in the third period. Scott goes for three. Johnson the rebound and the Worthy in the middle. And Parrish did a fine job on Worthy, who's upset. He thought he was fouled. It's about as much as I've seen Worthy react after a no call like that. Darren Day misses the jumper. Kareem the rebound. And they can really conserve Kareem with a game like this. Worthy and a blocking foul called against Dennis Johnson. And that'll be the fourth team foul against Boston. Here's Worthy, that one dribble drive, and I think he got kind of fouled on that by Robert Parrish, but Parrish got away from it, and I don't blame you, James. Four fouls on Dennis Johnson. Michael Cooper comes back in, and Fred Roberts checks in for the Celtics, and Robert Parrish sits down. He has scored 15, but nine of those were in the first period. The key people that Boston have to get into this style of defense is Kevin McHale and Robert Parrish to get those guys back to help stop the break. But they're on the bench right now. Yep. Cooper has a shot blocked by Day, and Worthy saves the ball by throwing it off of Fred Roberts. Jerry Seasting now comes in. It's unusual and tough, I guess, for Casey Jones to have to go to his bench and manipulate after he didn't have to do it all year. Correct, but he's going to try and save some of his tired players. Dennis Johnson will go down. They're going to scramble a little defensively with this unit that they have on the court right now. Bird is going to be the center for this team. It worked a little bit against the Detroit Pistons in game three when they were way back and came down to cut it to 12. Now with some speed in there, Boston might be able to get some easy baskets themselves. Ainge hits his third three-point shot. And Danny Ainge has nine of his 11 points here in the third. And the Celtics trail by 13. And they have to play some good defense, Boston, for at least three trips against the Lakers. This is one. But Green gets the offensive rebound and draws the foul. Couldn't block out A.C. Green. It was really one of the keys to the Lakers' resurgence this year. Second year from Oregon State, A.C. Green. See your Dave Cozy. Bird's still in there. When Bird leaves, the game is given up on. But Pat Riley, I'm sure during that timeout, said, I don't care who's got a green uniform out there. Let us play our game and beat them by 40 if we can. He started out that way, the first nine points. And 35 points in the first period. 
Remember in 1985, the Celtics destroyed the Lakers in game number one at Boston Garden. I think they scored 148 points in that. Larry Bird banks it in, and Bird with 30. In case you've forgotten, the Lakers came back and won that series. Magic Johnson comes back and hits, so Magic and Larry. Boy, have they just let Magic advance the ball up the court and get any shot he wants. Ames with a good penetration, leaving Fred Roberts free, and the basket counts in the foul. So with just under two minutes remaining in the third period, Roberts will go to the line after Magic picks up the personal foul. He's Aaron Day in there, they have speed themselves, the Celtics, to get people on the wing and perhaps get layups. That's the best part of this man's game, Fred Roberts, is getting on the wing and making layups. Sam Vincent would also fit into this pattern, although he's not in the game right now. No, he's not. But I think they're opting for Seasting, who perhaps uh, might be able to play better defense right now. Day did his best to try to stall Magic in the backcourt, and he is on Magic Johnson right now. Double team on Magic, leaving Cooper wide open. Loose ball into the hands of the Lakers. And once again, let's see if that's the call. Green fired it off the Celtic. That's twice they've done that in the second half. They have 23 seconds on the clock. Well, remarkably, Boston's got it down to 12 points. You get it down to 10, it could be a heck of a fourth quarter. And the Celtics, who are already in the penalty, committing the foul. Darren Day with the personal foul, and Magic Johnson will go to the line. Magic Johnson, who's the MVP this year, broke a three-year hold by Larry Bird. They were personal rivals. Now they're friendly, even though they're still rivals, and basically a couple of Midwestern guys who were 6'9", who were close to their families, even though one plays in glittery L.A. and the other one up in Boston. <laughs> glittery L.A., huh? Pat Riley says, I love L.A., smog and all. Looking for Larry Bird, the Celtics. Meal ticket has hit 10 in a row right now. Danny Ainge with seven on the clock. He's been pretty hot, not that time. Johnson the rebound. 14-point Laker lead minute remaining in the third period with this group in there however for Boston they're defending the fast break of the Lakers much better magic with a pick and roll to worthy what great acrobatics that James worthy exhibits when he's in the air around the hoop he doesn't even have to see the hoop under a minute remaining in the third period and the Lakers stretching their lead again Bird and Bird penetrated and forced Cooper inside. He'll take Cooper in most of the time because he feels he can get a shot off over Cooper in close to the hoop anytime he wants. Larry Bird has 32 points and has hit 11 in a row. Worthy from Magic and that combination has worked to perfection all night and Worthy with 31 and Magic with 29. 60 between those two. What a bullet pass he delivered James Worthy, Magic Johnson. 101-85, and it was just a moment ago, and the Celtics had cut the lead to 12. Three on the shot clock. Fred Roberts. Front rims with three seconds to go. Worthy shot. Almost. But the Lakers are over 100 after three with the score. 101-85. We'll return to game one of the 1987 NBA Finals from the Forum after this word from your local station. Kevin McHale and Robert Parrish. They are fresh, McHale and Parrish. And it's now or never for the Celtics to really kind of eat in if they can. I think uh, Sam Vincent is in there to try and create some pace for Boston, even with the slower big guys of the Celtics on the court. Michael Cooper committing his third personal foul. Michael Thompson is into the ball game, replacing Scott. So with Kareem in the lineup with Michael Thompson, Thompson plays the power forward position and good size for L.A. against Parrish and McHale. Celtics hit 80, 68 percent from the field in the third period, but were outscored by a point. That's pretty discouraging. 
Bird finally missed after 11 in a row, and Magic misses too. He doesn't have to follow suit all the time. No, <laughs> no. Vincent guarded by Cooper. 101 to 85. The biggest lead was 21 on a couple of occasions by the Lakers. Bird pulls up against Worthy. And McHale looking for the rebound. And a loose ball foul is called against the Celtics. A beautiful pick and roll by James Worthy and Magic. Two of the Celtics go and Magic. They leave Worthy to head to the hoop, and Magic delivers the easy two. I'm telling you, Magic reads defenses. Bird reads defenses. They had a two pass. Kareem, shot blocked by McHale. McHale scored nine of his 11 points in the first period, and Parrish nine of his 15 in the first. And Parrish is fouled. James Worthy, and that would be his first personal foul. So, Tommy, McHale and Parrish, not 100%, as we've chronicled before, had their best outing in the first period and have really slowed down off the boards and scoring since then. But they hurt them very much on defense, McHale and Parrish. They weren't able to get back and not that fast to begin with against a very fast team. And Boston has to delay the ball up to allow them to get back. Give them time to get back. They can't run a 100-yard dash all the time. Parrish has only three rebounds. Another big factor, of course. Only one point has been scored thus far in the fourth period. Nearly a minute and a half has elapsed. James Worthy. Harris. There's the rebound. McHale low post doubled with Michael Thompson and Kareem and hits the shot. And of course, he'd be doing a lot more of that if he didn't have that stress fraction. And he got great low post position. A sweet spot. Thompson didn't work him out of there. 101-88. Kareem. And it's still Lakers ball. John McEnroe back in L.A. after being ousted from the French Open. So from Paris to L.A. and watching the Lakers try to win a title. They're fifth since they moved to L.A. Worthy looking for Michael Thompson. And Worthy has a shot blocked, and the 24-second clock expires. Good teamwork by Vincent outside and McHale inside on. Sam Vincent made a heck of a team defensive move to get in and get at Worthy's shot. And the Celtics still lingering, you might say. Down by 13 with plenty of time. And the sun just about disappearing over the Pacific Ocean in Marina del Rey. Distribution. The Lakers can get them in several different ways. Fast break inside and outside. So the Celtics trying to cut it to 11 at least here. It's been a long time since they've gotten this close. Nearly threw it away to Bird. He is surrounded by three Lakers. Misses the shot. Kareem had it. And now the Lakers. By the way, Kareem has not had a basket since the first period of the game. Michael Thompson. All right, Magic Johnson is the premier middleman on fast break basketball. He can make the back line of defenses move, and he knows how to take advantage of it. And illegal defense called against the Lakers. Here comes Magic at Larry Bird. Now he gets into the defense, and... and Dennis Johnson has to look and adjust, and Thompson just slid behind DJ, and Magic said, that's two for sure. Each team now hit with an illegal defense call. Vincent working against Cooper. Nine minutes remaining in the fourth period. McHale pass over his head, and another turnover, and here come the Lakers again. This is the same lead they had at halftime, 15. Kareem still can't score after the first period barrage. Vincent, Dennis Johnson tries to get it into Parrish, and McHale is there. Kevin McHale now with 15 points. He had nine of those in the first period. 13 now. Half-court offense for both sides. And now an illegal defense, technical foul charged against the Celtics. 
Sam Vincent. The guilty party. Danny Ames back in for the Celtics, and Byron Scott comes in for the Lakers. As Sam Vincent to the left of the screen, guarding nobody, well below the foul line, and into the lane for more than the 2.9 count. Worthy going out. He has scored 31 points. 15 of those in the second period. There's the Cooper loop. The alley up to Michael Cooper. They've taken that out of the moth balls for this series. They're throwing the whole playbook at Boston. And the lead is 16. The Celtics had it down to 13. Eight minutes to go in the fourth. Harris. The rebound by Michael Thompson, who blocks out McHale. Open at the other side. Byron Scott with bullseye. And Casey Jones wants a timeout. The Lakers awake again. Doesn't take long. Giving that extra effort makes winners. The All You Can Be, sponsored by the U.S. Army. Offensive versatility often separates the good scorers from the great ones. A strong drive encourages a defense to sag toward the basket. In turn, this respect gives the scorer more freedom to fire up a jump shot. With a solid inside and outside game, Chuck Person has parlayed offensive versatility to be the best he can be. Palpatine, aggressor tank spotted. Dick, thank you. You know, when you sit in the front row at Laker games, you pay for it. It's about $175 a game. This is Joe Smith, who's chairman of the board of Capitol Records. How much do you spend a year on seats? You got four of them here in the front row. Cost me about $40,000 a year. $40,000. $40,000. I worked hard. I made the money. What better way to spend it? I don't do crazy things. I don't gamble. I don't use drugs. And I love the game of basketball. I give these seats to nobody. They're mine forever. This is the man responsible for the Beatles CDs. You sell any of those Beatles CDs? Sergeant Pepper and the Lakers are big, big winners tonight. 40 grand. Let's go back to Dick. And you know, Tommy, he buys those things to see what the Lakers may be pulling off here, possibly a world title. You know, Joe Smith was a disc jockey up in Boston, and he used to be a Celtic fan. I know him from years ago when I was a player. Seats in Boston Garden don't cost 40000 Yeah, I didn't need 40000 <laughs> to buy a seat in the Boston Garden. Cooper is all over Bird. Big challenge for Michael Cooper. Voted the best defensive player in the league. Mikhail setting a screen for Vincent. And a tough shot hey. over Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Here come the Lakers. Magic seeing the floor. They have 10 seconds on the shot clock. Kareem out of bounds. Michael Thompson was supposed to go to the hoop on that one. And it's the Celtics on the turnover is... James Worthy is back in the ball game, with the Lakers have a big command in the rebounding department. Here's that chance right now for the Lakers to really pop it to more than 18 points. But James Worthy on the wing in the fast break. Magic Johnson sitting down. He has scored 29 points, 13 assists tonight. And Michael Thompson picks off the pass from Danny Ainge. A forced pass by Danny Ainge. Roberts is guarding Worthy. Inside to Kareem. Right now, the Lakers have withstood the big storm by the Celtics, it appears. And now they can toy with the defending champion. Kareem, who blocked Vincent's shot. Four blocks by Kareem Worthy. One twelve to ninety. We have more than halfway remaining in this fourth period, and the Lakers have established their biggest lead of the game. Fred Roberts foul going to the hoop. A twenty-two point lead now for the Lakers, and they put on the steam, Tommy, after the Celtics cut it to thirteen. 
There's a big play for the Lakers right now. Vincent gets penetration, but Kareem is right there, picks it off, and boy, did they just outlet it and get it up. And they are immediately on the, the attack. And Fred Roberts takes an elbow right in the face. But look at who's there again. James Worthy with the jet shoes. Connor Henry, the young man who Brent talked about at the top of the program, as a contrast to the 40-year-old Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is coming to the ball game. And Greg Kite, who has not seen any action so far, also making his first appearance. Kurt Rambis comes in for Michael Thompson. McHale goes out. Dennis Johnson and Parrish on the bench. And Ainge on the bench. And this is concession time for the Boston Celtics. Nick, Celtics got blown out in another series against the Lakers. And they withstood that, that and came back. But I'll tell you, a blowout right now is making a big statement to the Celtics because they know that the Lakers are capable of doing that to them every game with that speed. Five on the shot clock. Byron Scott. Byron Scott with 14 points. He's come back from an off year to have his best season. Now you know why the Lakers had that best one and loss record in the league this is rambus clear lakers at 65 wins it's the first time they had the best record in a decade cooper misses the jumper 114 91 bird is still in there of course you have to, have to violently take him out of there vincent loses the ball to cooper Casey Jones ought to take him by the jersey and sit Larry Bird down in the next timeout and not let him play anymore. Cooper for three. But there's Scott, who saves it into the hands of Rambis. What a treat for these fans at the Forum. This is the one team they want to beat more than any other team, of course. Cooper from Kareem. And out of the pack is Connor Henry. Vincent, two on one scores the basket and showed a little bit of his quickness in that sequence. I think Sam Vincent would have been a much more effective player if he played a lot and if they elected the fast break. Boston really wasn't a fast break team this year. They were a half court offensive team. They've been fast break with just the starting five as great as they were. They might have worn down a lot earlier. Scott. Nearly four minutes remaining in the fourth period. And the Lakers putting on a show for their fans in game one of the best of seven. Well, Bird is such a competitor, and he's not coming out. And I'll bet you Casey Jones would have, they'd have to have a verbal battle before Bird had come out. That was Connor Henry just inside the three-point line for his first points. He came over from Houston. Green pass hit the bucket. But the Lakers, everything going their way. Three and a half to play. Green foul. Thursday at nine o'clock, game two of this as they leave the game. Worthy scored 33 points, had nine rebounds, and 10 assists. And he will be, in my opinion, the most difficult man for the Celtics to stop in this series. The next most difficult, I think, will be A.C. Green. Wes Matthews, who was picked up in October as a free agent. In at point guard now, Byron Scott with a left-handed layup, and Scott has scored eight points here in the fourth period. Connor Henry goes in and gets the basket. Uh, Wes Matthews with the ball, and he played some key minutes in game three against Seattle in the series. Really sitting on the bench most of the year. He used to throw up uh, outside shots like a knuckleball. He's kind of <laughs> changed a little bit. I was watching him in a pregame workout. Two-man game, Scott and Michael Thompson for the moment. Four seconds on the shot clock. Rambis, Scott, Makes the basket in the nick of time. 20 points for Byron Scott. He's hit his last five. And now the bench is empty. 
Mike Spreck and Adrian Branch in for the Lakers to the cheers of those coming out. You're looking at a route in game one. Of the round ball, 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 steep, dribble, dabble, dribble, dabble, dribble. Prince of the courts, so slow, so cool, so much like new Coke. And myself. Revolutionizing common thoughts of common people on what the game is all about. He's great, he's great, he's coming, bye, bye. Sure, man. If you can dream it, you can do it. Today, the Prudential can show you a new insurance and mortgages with the right choices, the right guide. And the knowledge and the experience of using that speed, that's what's so important. They are not going to be forced out of this type of game. It's going to take excellent defense to for even come close to forcing out of, a, out of this style of play. That's Sam Vincent. Now, he may play a role in this thing as the series progresses, too. But the real big guys, I think Casey Jones got to make up his mind that perhaps he's going to have to play a Fred Roberts or somebody that like that a little more as an extra help defender to stop that at least three-man attack. What about the points if McHale and Parrish can't give it to him? Well, he's going to have to make a decision. The rebound by Connor Henry. Here's Dave filling the lane, and Dave going up. And they're going to count that as the basket goaltending. So the Celtics really fast-breaking for the only time tonight with the unit they have on there. Well, this is a fast-break unit. These are the young legs. They're not uh, good inside people. They know how to run. Vincent steals the ball away from Wes Matthews. Two minutes. Two minutes to go in the game, and the foul on Wes Matthews. Well, this will be only the second time that Casey Jones has lost game one of a playoff series as Celtic coach. He had won 14 of 15 game ones before this one. And right now, while we have a moment to look at Casey, you know, he attended the funeral of his mother, Eula, in San Francisco last week and missed game six of the Pistons series. And they have established a scholarship aid minority student athlete fund called the Eula Jones Memorial Scholarship at the University of San Francisco, the school where Casey Jones attended. And uh, that's how Casey Jones got his chance to play college ball. So a scholarship has been established in the memory of Eula Jones. You know, Casey is an awfully big man. He told Dennis Johnson to commit that foul. You know, that foolish foul in the last couple of seconds against the Pistons, he went over immediately after the game, apologized for DJ for making him do it, and then admitted it to the press. Now, that's a big people. Not many coaches do stuff like that. Well, he's a big person, and he's a class gentleman, and uh, he's been that way all the time, and there's been many years when Casey Jones couldn't get an interview or the phone call returned after he had had his chance to be a head coach. And he's been an outstanding coach with the Celtics, and the players like him very well. And Pat Riley told us yesterday, he says, you know, you just simply can't win the title every year. <laughs> well, it's getting tougher and tougher, has been evidence. We have a minute and 37 seconds remaining. And with Connor Henry and Darren Day and Greg Kite, Fred Roberts, and Sam Vincent for the Celtics. Mike Smreck, A.C. Green, Rambus, Wes Matthews, and Adrian Branch for the Lakers. And a loose ball foul. Loose to 31! And let's see, it is a loose ball foul, and it's against Kurt Rambus. Rambus, of course, one-time starter with the Lakers, and a key figure in past Lakers-Celtic playoffs. And one of the reasons that uh, I think the Lakers are better this year is that they have turned to speed, and Rambus was a wide body and really didn't give him a four-man fast-break attack. With Green, they do have that. I think Rambus still could give him the same type of rebounding game as A.C. Green, but not that quickness up the court. Well, you know, uh, we both knew that Pat Riley decided to stock his team with, with what you call wide bodies to match up against the Celtics and said, the heck with that, we're going to go back to quickness, even with the 40-year-old Kareem in there. I'll tell you, and this organization, and Pat Riley in particular, staked their 
They didn't panic last year after they lost to the Rockets. And they had to have a real belief that Kareem would be able to help them this year. And Pat Riley caused them from creating panic trades. Wes Matthews with the basket, 124 to 106. So for the Lakers, this game started out with a bang. It ends with a whimper for the Boston Celtics. Who will be trailing 1-0. With under a minute to go. Larry Bird scored 32. Parrish had 16 and McHale 15. The guards just didn't come through for the Celtics. Adrian Branch with the air ball and Mike Spreck, the former Chicago Bull. He's a wide body, wouldn't you call him that? Spreck? He sure is, but I think he's going to be a good player. Connor Henry with the drive, and Connor Henry scoring eight points off the bench. Worthy with 33, Magic with 29, and Scott with 20 are the leading scores for the Lakers. That's Adrian Grant, former University of Maryland. Lakers can relax here. They were up by nine after one period, 15 at the half, 16 after three. Darren Day with a basket. This is a statement game by the Lakers, and Casey Jones will have to look at it, and he'll have to say, you know, my worst fears came true. I really don't know how I'm going to find the answers to stop this speed. I didn't think it would perhaps be as potent as it is, but it's terrible. The Lakers in a big one, 126 to 113. Right now, let's go to Pat O'Brien, who's with James Worthy. Pat? Thank you very much, James. Congratulations. Uh, did you make a statement tonight? What are you telling the Celtics? Well, the only statement I think we're making is to ourselves. Uh, we know that we have to stay honed in to this series. We can't uh, take any, any games for granted. You know, game two is going to be crucial, and I think uh, that's the experience that we're showing this year. It look like anybody can stay with you guys tonight anyway. Well, we're focused. We really are. More focused than we've been uh, since I've been here in five years. And, uh... On CBS Sports, we will rock you. We will, we will rock you. What do you know about the points? Nine rebounds. And how about the ten assists? Magic Johnson with 29 points and eight rebounds. For the Boston Celtics, one man stood out all night on offense, and that was Larry Bird. He wound up with 32 points, and he also contributed five assists.